Hello everyone and welcome to my young and restless official channel. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before we begin, please hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. Young and the restless spoilers for Tuesday, March 19 indicate that Jordan will be devastated to learn she won't be saved, and Nikki Newman, Victoria Newman, and Claire Grace will all show up to visit her. Rather, Nikki will seize the chance to bask in the spotlight with Claire and Victoria. Jordan will respond by saying that Claire will always be a stranger to the Newman family, much like Adam Newman, and that she will haunt them all. Jordan will believe that Victoria should sleep with one eye open, since Claire might lose it and turn against her as well. Over her troubles with sobriety and Seth Morgan's passing, Nikki will also face backlash, but she will remain strong and insist that Jordan return to prison. Jordan, however, is going to give Victoria, Claire, and Nikki a surprise when she takes out a vial of poison that she concealed beneath the adjacent mattress. Jordan will consider this her way out after she acknowledges that her original intention was to bring Nikki and Victor Newman there and send them out together. Jordan will ingest the poison and act as though Claire's lack of parting words has offended him. Claire will inquire what to do after Jordan collapses visibly onto the mattress. Nikki will argue that neither they nor Victoria knew there was poison present, nor that they coerced Jordan into taking it. Victoria would argue that perhaps they ought to assist Jordan. Victoria will still question whether it is truly what they desire though, since she will point out that Jordan did this to evade justice. Claire will question whether Jordan deserves to live or die, as she considers everything that Jordan has done for them and taken from them. Nick Newman won't be pleased with such a risky idea, because he will be receiving reports at the Newman Ranch regarding Nikki Victoria and Claire facing Jordan collectively. Victor will reassure Nick that everything with Jordan is under control and being taken care of, even though he wasn't excited about it either. When Summer Newman shows up with inquiries concerning Claire, Victor determines that, as a Newman family member, she deserves to hear the whole truth. Summer will go crazy and ask why Claire isn't in jail after she learns that Claire is assisting Jordan in pursuing the Newmans. Summer will learn that Claire's latest hospital admission included time spent in the psych ward from Victor's explanation that Michael Baldwin set up Claire to receive mental health care instead. Victor will advocate for Claire's acceptance and support now that she has made significant progress in her recuperation. Claire is his new granddaughter. Summer will continue to express her disgust and ask Nick about his personal emotions. Nick acknowledges that it hasn't been easy for him to move on from what transpired at the lake house, particularly because Claire had a significant role in Nikki's collapse from sobriety. Summer will maintain that it would be a grave error for Claire to take care of Harrison Abbott or simply spend time with him alone until she gets home and meets Kyle Abbott. Summer explains that Claire is psychologically and emotionally disturbed in response to Kyle's questioning. Summer is going to find it difficult to believe that Claire would be welcomed into the family after all that she has been through and all that she is capable of. Chelsea Lawson will talk to Dr. Alcott about her attempt to take her own life on Tuesday's episode of Y and R. She expresses concern that Connor Newman would try something similar before receiving treatment. Dr. Alcott will, however, maintain her optimistic attitude and reassure Chelsea that her knowledge of mental health issues is a strength rather than a weakness. Having stated that, Dr. Alcott will think that Connor's residential ERP therapy is the greatest option and that a decision needs to be made right now. Connor will not let Adam to unpack his backpack at school because his father would not do it correctly. Additionally, Connor will clarify that he switched to a different room because the last one was unfortunate. Adam will wonder what Connor means when he says he doesn't want to be there. Connor will adamantly state that he despises his school and is opposed to being admitted to a specialized hospital. Adam will reassure his kid that Connor can return home if he starts pleading. 
Crimson Lights will be the first destination for Connor, Adam, and Chelsea when they return to Genoa City, which won't be long. Adam and Chelsea try to talk Connor into speaking when they are in the waiting area for his appointment. He claims that he despises everything about it, including the doctor, himself, and his presence. Chelsea gives a gasp, hearing him say that breaks her heart. He is the world's most endearing boy. It applies to both Adam and his mother, he explains. Adam hopes that what he said wasn't meant. People occasionally say things when they're upset or annoyed. Connor, I assure you, I understand your feelings. My life has been filled with many moments when I've been upset or annoyed because I can't seem to make things go the way I want them to. He saw improvements and Connor will also experience improvements. Though it will benefit him, he can understand why the boy doesn't want to be there. It will benefit them all. They will overcome it together. Chelsea steps away with Adam, and she laments that Connor won't listen to her when she tries to tell him that these sessions would help. I can hear you, Connor snarkily says. They're not keeping anything from him, according to Adam. Connor feels that his queries won't help, so he wants to leave. Adam suggests that they call off the meeting. No, Chelsea responds, that would create a precedent. This is what they all need, right now. That's when the doctor shows up. Chelsea tells Connor it's too essential, despite his pleas to his parents. Adam tells the doctor he will be attending the session today and takes her side. Both of Connor's parents must attend. Ashley enters society as Billy wraps off a work call. He approaches the bar after observing her make her way there. Ashley, hello. Ashley responds, hi brother, what's going on? Billy scowls, hi miss, everything all right? Ashley giggles, asking why it wouldn't be. Billy queries whether Tucker has entirely left her system. She says she's over him that he's a jerk. Billy feels that she was going to say something more. Ashley says it again, she is done with Tucker. He is repulsive. Tucker is also over with the family. Billy is aware that she has found it more difficult to move on. Ashley claims to have done it. Billy queries, what's going on, Ash? You don't sound particularly like yourself. Ashley is curious about her voice at that time. You don't have to cover up for me, Billy says to her. She has never referred to him as bro in her life, so he's not buying that she's now fine. According to Ashley, she tried to be calm. Devin texts Billy, informing him of a board meeting, and Billy replies that he must leave. He admits that tensions are high there at the moment. Ashley acknowledges that internal conflicts inside the company are detrimental to it. She tells him not to enter the boxing arena. Billy queries once more, are you okay? Ashley yells at him to get over his concern for her. Billy scowls and walks away. Ashley says, boy, that was a close one, as she gives the bartender an order for a ginger ale with a cherry. Victor informs Nikki at the ranch that Jordan was, as usual, overconfident. Without Nick's assistance, he would not have been able to reverse her. He remembers the expression she got when she realized she had been duped. Nikki snickers at the chance he took. Victor scoffs. It worked well because he was defending his family. She's no longer able to harm them. Nikki muses that the devil is currently going through hell since she created it. It couldn't have happened to a more worthy individual. Nikki can only image how helpless Jordan must feel, isolated from the outside world and confined to a room. Victor is the reason Jordan is living it today, but she lived it because of her. The mustache snorts at the sick woman who torments those whom she regards as rivals. Poetic justice, that is. Nikki claims that she is too good for prison. Victor says, much too good, as well. That's still your plan, right? inquires Nikki. Victor attests to her payment. Nikki tells him she wants to see her again before the police take her into custody. Victor thinks this is absurd, but Nikki wants to speak with her directly. Victor believes it to be a terrible plan. Thanks for watching if you like this video, so please don't forget to subscribe my channel and don't miss any update.